Welcome to another episode of the Watch Me Wholesale Show. Here's how this works. I'm gonna randomly select a market, then I'm gonna go into that market and find a distressed property for sale, run the numbers, and then call and make an offer. Now guys, we're gonna be using PropWire to do this. Now if you don't know what PropWire is, it's the nation's largest database of off-market and on-market seller data with over 157 million records nationwide. Best of all, it's absolutely free to search and download as much data as you want. And if you're new here, my name is Jerry Norton. I make millions of dollars a year wholesaling and flipping houses. And here on my YouTube channel, I show you how to do the same. So if you wanna be a flipping genius like me and live your dream life, subscribe to my channel and watch my videos. Okay, so I've got a picker wheel up here on the screen with 10 random markets. Let's spin the wheel and choose a market. <laughs> okay, Birmingham, Alabama is the winner. Let's go find a deal. Okay, so let's go into joinpropwire.com. I'm gonna put in Birmingham, Alabama. And then I'm gonna choose for my lead type, MLS active, because I wanna see some action. So we're gonna try to get on the phone right away. And I'm going to put single family, and I think I'm just going to go three bedrooms just to get rid of any small stuff. And then I'm going to sort this from list price, and let's pick from lowest to highest. Now, what I just did here is I put in some very basic filters inside of PropWire. You can see here on the left is a map with dots of properties and on the right is individual records. And if I run my mouse over each one, it'll show me uh, where it's at on the map. So you can see this one right here for 12.5 and it's over there on the map. And what I wanna do here is go through and, and look for properties that I wanna go after. Notice a couple things here. It gives me a lot of data about each one of these. Like this one says it's single family, it's corporate owned and bank owned. So it hits these categories. It's a new property, it's for sale. This one here says individual owned single family. And you know you have records like this down here that say absentee owner, free and clear, vacant. So it gives you a lot of data right at a glance, which I love about PropWire. And then what you wanna do is you wanna go through here and you know find a property that you might be interested in. And you could see here, you could scroll through all of these until you find you know something that you're really interested in. And I'm just gonna scroll down here for a while and, and see you know, what's going on. I'm, you can see I'm moving into the 60,000 price range and I'm just gonna keep scrolling down a ways. Usually I pick something already for, for doing this, but uh, you know, here we're at 115,000. Uh, see if I can get out of some maybe super, super low income stuff and see if we can find something a little more decent. So here's a write up on this. Here's some pictures, says it's in good, it's, it says it's in good condition and it says it's an investment property, it has a basement, potential for a fourth bedroom, second bath, and it's tenant occupied. Okay, so they're asking 115, there's a tenant in this property, I like the curb appeal, there's no pictures of the inside, so we don't know what the inside looks like, but looks like roof is good, and this is that basement, you could tell that it's got, so looks pretty good from the outside, got some decent curb appeal. Now, what I want to do is the next thing I like to do is I like to go to the history and just see what's going on here. Okay, so, or let me go to the owner first. So this owner, Darren Calhoun, he owns 13 properties. So this is probably a mom and pop investor. How do I know that? Because he owns these properties in his name. So it doesn't even have an entity set up. That's typically a mom and pop that would do something like that. He owns, it looks like he owns some land too. And let's go to the history here. And if this is correct, it looks like, you know, this is showing a different owner here. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but it looks like he's owned this for a while. And he bought it way back in 1989. And the one thing that I noticed here is this thing has been on the market forever, 364 days. Tomorrow is the one year anniversary of being on market. That's wonderful. So that tells us that this thing is way overpriced. How do I, whoops, how do I know it's overpriced? because something wouldn't sit on the market for a year if it was priced at all decent. So right out of the gate, I know that. I don't even need a comp it to know that it's overpriced because it's been sitting forever. 
Um, the, the number one way to find out if something's overpriced is how long is it sitting on the market? We're in a low inventory market, so stuff should sell fast or decent if it is priced you know, halfway good. So here's our agent here. So we can look that, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and contact this agent. In fact, something I like to do often is before I comp the property, I'll go ahead and reach out to the agent and say, hey, can I call you in five minutes? Now what that does is it preps it for me making the call, make sure that I have the right phone number. That way when they see me call, they recognize the number. Okay, that's the guy that just texted me. Maybe they'll say, hey, call me in 10, I'm, I'm at an appointment, whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and text this agent and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put her number in and I'm gonna text and say, I'm gonna say, uh, hi, Nicole, I'm an investor uh, looking to make a cash offer on your property on Sparta. Can I call to discuss in five minutes, okay? All right, and that went through. So, okay, so I got the text, it went through. So now I know I have the right number, it's a cell phone. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go comp this property. So I'm gonna click on comps. We're in this little pocket right here. And now they're calling this 2,600 square feet, which I don't think that's right. That might be a data error. There's no way that house is that big. Maybe they're counting the basement. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just go uh, search this property on like Redfin or Zillow and see what it's showing there. So if I, if I go ahead and do that, let's just see what this shows us. Cause I can just tell that that's not 2,600 square feet. It's probably half that. All right, so I'm just gonna pop this address in Redfin and see what we get. Okay, so it's 1349, so that makes sense. So now when I comp this thing, I have to be careful that I'm looking at that. So I'm gonna go comp it. It's giving me a good little pocket right here. I don't wanna be up against this you know, mountain range or whatever's going on right here. And this is my neighborhood, so I like what it's giving me. I'm gonna go back six months, not a year. And I'm not gonna do a range on the square footage because this is off a bit. But like, look, let's see what I can find here. Um, like this one right here, great comp, really close by. It's 979 feet and it got 150, which is 153 a foot. Let's see, this is a big one. It got 103 bucks a foot. And this one, this one is about our size. This got 111 bucks a foot, which would be 125. So that's why they're overpriced. I mean, the highest comps are coming in a little bit higher than where this thing is listed. So here's what I'm gonna do. You know, I could go to my deal analyzer and guys, you can get this for free. And I could put in here, you know, 1350 square feet. And I could put in here that, you know, this thing's got an ARV of 135. I don't know what the repairs are. There's no photos, but let's just say that it needs you know, it's a rental. So let's just say that we need to do carpet and paint. So I'll put 15 and I, I need to buy this at a discount to cover things. And, you know, maybe I need to be at around, I don't know, 70,000, 75,000. Let's say I want to wholesale this for 10 grand. I think an investor is going to want to make some money on this. Uh, so, you know, now I'm down there at 66,000. So obviously that's not gonna work. They're asking 115, it's been sitting on the market. If they were at all motivated, they would be dropping the price. That's the assumption. Now never, rule number one in wholesale real estate, never put yourself in the seller's shoes, meaning don't try to think like the seller and use logic because real estate is emotional, not logical, <laughs> at least from the seller's perspective, maybe not ours. Uh, so I'm now, I don't, I don't know what's a good number. And sometimes I'll just do this. I'm now I'm going to call the agent and I'm just going to gather information. I'm going to make an offer. I'm going to make it low. Maybe it's 65, 75. I don't know. Just to, just for the sake of making a low offer and just for the sake of making a connection with this agent and just to try to see where things are at, maybe I'll offer seller finance. You know, sometimes when it's overpriced and it's not moving and they're not dropping the price, Sometimes I'll offer seller financing. I'll say, hey, I'll pay full price or close to it if you'll give me good terms. So let's just now call the agent and I'm gonna 
gather the data and I'm gonna get feedback and then I'm gonna try to make a decision based on that, okay? So let's do that now. I'm gonna go grab this, or I already, I already texted her, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call her. She hasn't responded to my text, but now I'm just gonna dial the number and see if she answers. Hopefully she does. Hello? Yes, hi, is this Nicole? Yes, it's she. Hi, Nicole, my name's Jerry Norton. How are you today? I'm well, how about you? Good, good. Calling you about your listing on Sparta. Okay, yes. Looks like this has been on the market for a while. What can you tell me about it? Yes, it has. We've been on the market for a while. Um, it's, it's a three bedroom, one bathroom home. It is uh, rented right now with a Section 8 tenant. For how much? Uh, um, it's nine hundred dollars per month that the tenant does pay every month. The lease was recently renewed in January, um, and you know, sellers is, is really looking just for a cash sale. Um, so that's so that's so that's kind of where we are right now uh, with everything. They want cash, okay? Is on that on that section eight? How much of it is paid by the tenant and vendored by the state? Do you know? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, he's he, he's supposed to be giving me that information because I'm not sure of the breakdown. He just knows that right now it's at nine hundred dollar total. Do you know when that lease is up? It's a year lease, so it will be up in January next January. January coming up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's no pictures of the inside. What's it look like? It's inside is in pretty good condition. Um, a lot of it is aesthetic, like painting and just uh, items like that. I didn't see any serious looking defects on the inside, but I can get pictures. I believe I do have some pictures that he okay. wanted me to send as just per request, so I can actually forward those pictures over to you. Okay, and why do you think it hasn't sold? Well, um, the feedback that we're receiving right now is because he's looking for cash. He's looking for that cash sale, and I think we're listed at one hundred fifteen thousand. And we've just been receiving a lot of um, counter, I guess, offers of seller financing. Most people are calling him wanting to do the seller financing, and he's just not interested in that seller financing at this point. Yeah, I mean, I would say the same thing because at that price, it really won't make a lot of sense unless. You could do seller financing. I mean, cash, you got to be at a steep discount for cash, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, that's the challenge is uh, if I'm going to come in and put cash into a property, it's got to be a smoking deal. Otherwise, you go buy something else that is a deal. Right. Right. Yeah. And, you know, he, he, he did say that he would um, allow bank financing as well, but uh -huh. he's really keen on wanting to stay at that above that 100000 mark, at least a hundred. Or a little bit above it so i know we've received um, a few offers that he did want to entertain but they were kind of withdrawn at about ninety five thousand. so that's kind of where he's sitting at just based on that price he wants to say that a hundred thousand price and he wanted he would prefer cash but he has said that he would do bank financing as well and you know i could just i could still have another conversation with him so i just kind of present everything that comes in for him to kind of review i see but he was entertaining 95, but then those offers weren't, they didn't go through. They didn't go through, no. So, yeah. and, and they weren't written offers. It was more so Verbal. just a, a conversation. So we never received anything in writing. Yeah. But were those cash or no? They were finance. They were financing yeah. offers. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I like that it's in great condition. I like the, the feel of the house. It's got some good curb appeal. Mm -hmm. Is it on a basement? There is a basement. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there is a full basement as well. Um, and that basement is not really being used right now. So all the living area is upstairs. But the basement does have the potential mm -hmm. to have another bedroom and bathroom. Yeah, I mean, there's some there's some nice comps in that neighborhood of some people flipping houses. I, we also flip. You know, there's a couple of nice flips in the area. Um, so it seems like a great neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It is. But yeah, I mean, I would just, for cash, I'd have to be significantly lower than where your asking price is. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, it's been sitting for a while. Is he, is he just not, he must be okay to just keep collecting rent and not sell and wait to get his number, sounds like. 
Right. Right now, that's kind of where he is since he is collecting the rental income. He yeah. does want to sell. You know, and it's just one of those things where I would definitely want to have a follow-up conversation with him to see if anything has changed with his motivation at this point. But yeah, since he is um, collecting the rent, then he's not, you know, just in a place where he feels like he has to sell right now, but he would prefer to sell. So we just okay. kind of been sitting yeah, and getting the feedback that we've been receiving. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I I mean, I think what maybe would be a good idea is you take him a verbal offer, like a cash offer from me. It is going to be low, and he's I get it that he'll say no, but I think it's a good idea to do because worst case, it helps him reset his mindset around this and maybe do a price reduction, which will help you sell it. Mm-hmm. So I don't really consider it a loss, really, and you never know. Sometimes people take offers when... They're just fed up and ready to go, and it's in front of them, you know. Mm-hmm. But I think I would need to be like around seventy-five. Okay. Um, seventy-five. Yeah, and I know that's again. I know that's significantly lower than what he wants, but um, again, if I'm going to tie up cash, I got to get a deal. Mm-hmm. And I could pay a lot more if he would entertain seller financing. I mean, that's why you're getting those offers. Mm-hmm. It is right. true, like because you can make this pencil. If uh, if the down payment and the rate is decent, does he own it free and clear or does he have a loan on it? It's free and clear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if, if uh, you know, if, if he would entertain seller financing, I think he could get a lot more for it. That's, mm-hmm. I mean, I think that would be smart to at least consider. Mm-hmm. But again, if he, if he's not interested and just wants cash, then I get it. Looks like he's owned it for a while. Mm-hmm. Right. He has. Yeah. This is showing 1989. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's a long time. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Well, do you have any issue with that? By the way, I'm unrepresented. I'd let you submit the offer for me. Okay. I can do that. I can definitely uh, submit that for you and and speak with him to see how he feels about that and then provide you with that feedback. Okay. And then tell him again. Say, hey, you know, this. if the terms are attractive enough, I could pay full price. I could pay the 115. Okay. You know what I mean, but I would. It would have to be. It would have to be a good down payment, and a good interest rate because I have to cash flow it, obviously. Mm-hmm. So as long as I can cash flow, then I'll pay full price with seller mm-hmm. financing. Gotcha. So okay. and and then he, you know, he's been he waited a year anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know what I mean, and then he could be done with it. But so run that by him too. Say say hey. Uh, 75 cash, 115 full price offer with seller finance, you know, and then we can come back with the terms if he's open to it. And mm-hmm. like, if, if you tell me, Hey Jerry, he's open to seller finance, then we could, I could tell you what the terms would be. And then we could see what he says about that. Okay. And then okay. do you have anything okay. else? Do you have anything else coming up? That's yours that you're looking for an offer? Not yet, not yet, but when I do come across um, other properties, then I will definitely keep them in mind. Yeah, well, we're buying for buy and hold, we're buying for flips. You know, uh, we do, it it does have to be a deal. Like, I'm not, you know, I don't overpay, but Mm -hmm. if you sit down with a seller and they've got something distressed and they'd like to entertain a cash offer, you know, call us because maybe we can work out something before you go on market with it. You know, that's what we like to do with agents. Mm And again, I'll let you have both sides of the commission. I'm unrepresented, so it's a win for you too. Okay, sounds good. Sound good? Okay. And then we'll I'll probably follow up with you periodically, just to see how it's going. If you got anything coming up. Okay, sounds good. Okay, thanks, Nicole. All right, thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, so. Uh, you know, sometimes when, when an agent says, oh, they said no to cash or, oh, they said no to seller finance, it doesn't mean that I just roll over and give in and, and don't still pursue that option. You could see there that I told them like, well, yeah, you're getting seller finance offers because the only way this makes sense at 115 is if the seller is willing to be creative, make attractive terms. And I hope you gathered there what I said, uh, I'll pay full price. Now, I didn't tell her what the terms need to be for full price. But think about it. I'll pay any price if the terms are attractive enough. And that's the main thing you have to understand about creative finance. It does not matter about price. It matters about terms. If I can get this thing for 5% down with a 4% interest rate with a 900 
a month, Section 8. Section 8 means that it's welfare. It's, it's vendored by the state. Um, typically with Section 8, some or all of it is covered by the state, but sometimes the tenant is required to cover some of it. it depends on their voucher. So maybe the tenant's paying $200 and the state's paying $700. That matters because if some of it's coming from the tenant, then you still have to collect. And if all of it's coming from the state, that's nice because on the first of the month, you know, it hits your account like clockwork. You don't ever have to worry about collecting that, that rent payment uh, with Section 8, whatever part's vendored by the state. So that's why I asked that. Uh, we found out that the, the lease is up in January. Um, Section 8 tenants tend to be good tenants because they don't want to lose their voucher. So they, you know, they, they follow the rules for the most part. Um, Section 8 tenants are hard on properties because they're not working typically. So they're at home all day you know, wearing it out. Uh, the best tenants are the ones that work all day and they just sleep in the home, right? Because they're gone. But so, so Section 8 tenants tend to be very hard on properties when they do leave. Usually you have a lot of work to do to make it rent ready again. Oftentimes that additional work offsets the benefit of having the Section 8 in the first place. So, you know, it's kind of a mixed, there's mixed ideas around whether Section 8 is good or bad, you know, as far as a, as a good strategy for rentals. Um, and then with the 75 offer guys, um, you know, I don't even really know. I'm not really that certain that I like that. I just wanted to give her a low offer. She said she was getting, they got offers at 95. Now those were not legit offers. She said they weren't in writing. They didn't, they didn't actually come through. I think those were people probably fishing to see what the seller would say. And she did reveal that the seller entertained those $95,000 offers. So here we're at 115 and she's telling me right out of the gate, she said, oh, he'd like to be around 100. And then she says, oh, he entertained a 95. So I don't know, maybe this guy will take 75 and 75 might be a deal. You know, I would definitely want to make sure that I've got a buyer in that neighborhood of 85 that I could assign it to or that that actually pencils. Um, but sometimes I just feel out the agent, feel out what's going on. And then I just need to know, okay, wherever the market's coming in here, whatever feedback I'm getting, I just want to go significantly lower than that or a certain percentage lower than that as my offer. Not because that offer makes any sense other than I took the feedback she gave me and then made an offer lower than what the market is offering to her. So sometimes I'll call agents and they'll say, yeah, uh, we've been getting offers for around 95. The seller says no. Okay, well, how many offers are you getting around 95? Oh, well, we, we keep getting them around there. You know, we've, we've had four or five offers around 90, 95. Like if an agent were to say that to me, I would say, okay, market's willing to pay 90, 95. I need to be at 75 or 80. Why? Because I want to be below the market so that I can bring it to market at the numbers that the market wants. Does that make sense? So that's all I'm using for analysis. I'm just taking feedback and basing my decision on that. So then if they come back and they say yes to 80, then I'm like, okay, they said yes to 80, they were turning down 90, 95, but that's the past, those buyers are gone, now here's where we are, and they'll take it. So I'll give you an example real quick. Uh, my son Nathan, who's learning how to wholesale, he called on this house in Florida, and um, he ran his numbers, and he's like, okay, I need to be at 70, maybe 75. So he tells the agent, hey, my offer is 70, 75. The agent said, We've been getting that offer again and again and again, and the seller kept saying no to that offer, And but I think they're kind of fed up, and I think they might be ready to play ball. So she says to Nathan, let me call the seller and see where he's at. So she calls the seller. Seller says, okay, take it. She comes back and says, hey, seller will take 75. And I told Nathan, well, Nathan, if the market's at 75, we need to be at 65, <laughs> right? But my point with that is, they were saying, no, 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 no. Nathan catches them at the right time. Some of this is just timing, guys. Like That's why you just get on the phone and do this because a lot of times it's just timing. You time it right, the stars align, the seller's ready. They said no before, but now they say yes, and you get yourself a great deal. So you know that's the name of the game. You just got to be consistent with this. So anyway, I hope this was helpful, guys. Remember, uh, I used PropWire to find this deal. We're doing a really cool promo right now with PropWire where you can get 2,500 skip traces for a month for $97 a month. We call it PropWire Gold. It's really cool. Again, 2,500 skip traces for only $97 per month. That's about a $300 value for only $97, a no-brainer. 
that gets you phone numbers so that you can do the same type of thing direct the seller and you can start calling sellers and make offers to get deals. Uh, so go to propwiregold.com to sign up for that special promo. If, if you haven't get my deal analyzer, just go to mydealanalyzer.com. Again, that's totally free and you can get that as well. And guys, leave a comment. Let me know your big takeaways on this episode. Keep watching the show. We're releasing videos on this show right now, at least for now, every single week. And we plan to do that for a while. And we hope we're getting a lot of value. But again, share your comments on what you're learning, any questions you have, and we'll try to get back to you on those. And we'll see you on the next video.